All right, we've got our recovery rig set up. Open, open, that's open. And we're gonna start recovering. This is the one that was leaking through the pressure switches. Yep, leaking right through the pressure switch wire. So it had about a 1.6 in it, and we're already done. We're gonna replace that pressure switch with the LEM one. We're gonna unsweat that one and put the right one in. Okay. And then we're replacing the TXV too. We got the the fan totally out and out of the way. And here's our suspect here that we're changing. This guy right here. We're just gonna snip those wires right off. We can get that unsweated. Not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. Well, I went and turned my torches on and my oxygen regulator blew. So I'm going to buy a new one. I, I don't have a spare. So I've been nursing these regulators along for a long time, though. Both gauges, actually, yeah, both gauges on both oxygen and acetylene have been broken for a long time. And I've been adjusting them by, by sound. I can usually hear how much pressure I need coming out of them. So it's time to replace them. So... It sucks I have to do it in the middle of the job, but here's what it is. Let's go buy new regulators. All right. Got a new one of each. Settling oxygen. Get them changed out. Got these for United Refrigeration. Well, that's more like it. Look at these things. <laughs> yep, it was time. Now I go 7 and 14. 14 on the oxygen when it's open seven on the acetylene some guys go 2010 i do 714 all right go ahead and turn our nitro on just right at the bottom right there just so we got a little bit going Not bad, not bad at all.
I got my nitro off while I'm doing this. I don't have much on this side, so I'll do that. So, by flow filter dryer. Filter dryer's in, our new pressure switch is in. I think I'm gonna pressure test it at least a little bit out here for right now. That way I know everything is done out here. So when I get done inside, I can just leak test inside. All right, I got about 160 on it, just enough to, to test my stuff out here and of course my Leak soap trigger is messed up. I think more is coming out the bottom than it is anywhere else. All right, here's our TXV we're about to swap out. I got a comment on my last video when I did a TXV that it should be adjusted. Now, these TXVs from Carrier are not adjustable. Some TXVs are, these TXVs are not. You can see the bottom of it here. That is not an adjustable TXV there. These are fixed. Typically fixed at, you know, 10, 12 degrees of subcooling. All right, here's our TXV. I feel like this TXV might have been replaced before because that is not the original strap they give you. <laughs> fly doing get out of here fly yeah that is certainly not the strap they give you but at least they did put it back with that screw okay but I do like these flare nut style better because you can get it tighter and not worry about it moving around on you I'm not sure why they did away with this style but I certainly like this style a lot better. All right, so out of our old TXV, we have our screen here. We wanna put that back into the new one. Just like so. Bam. I wanna, of course, make sure it's clean though. Any dirt and debris you wanna get off there before you put it in there. All right, I got it brazed in and on, on pressure. I didn't want to film it because I needed to do it quick because I was setting off the smoke alarm. So I got this brazed in, got it brazed in back there, got this tightened down and I'm leak checking it now. I only got about 150 PSI on it just to see if I got any leaks. I'm gonna finish putting everything else in. Then I'll pump it back up to 400 or so. All right, there we go. My new TXV is installed. I just gotta put that back, put my panels back. Doing a pressure test right now. It's been on for just about three minutes. It actually went up a point. So this is where we started at here. Actually, this is where we started at 358.4. I'm gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes. This one's on the other side here. That one's not testing, but that is on my other side. So we're gonna see what it comes out at. 
Alright, we got her on vacuum now. She's down to about 1664. We got our gas ballast open until we get down a little bit lower, typically under a thousand, then we'll close it up and let her pump. So we're gonna let her eat for a while. And then I think I'm gonna go eat. Alright, I got everything buttoned back up for the most part. And we're still pulling our vacuum. We are down to 728. So we're gonna go to lunch. Our gas ballast is now shut. We're gonna go to lunch and see what it does when we come back. All right, back from lunch. Huh. Down to 280. Very nice. We'll have to do a decay test though. Look at this little asshole. I think I need to upgrade my hoses. <clears throat> I just need to I just need to upgrade them. Get something better. I've had these for a while. I think they're just wore out. I don't think I have a leak. I, I think I have an equipment issue here. Nothing wrong with my vacuum pump. This thing kicks ass. But I gotta I gotta get new equipment here. New uh, new hoses zero this off and we're going to do this so we have liquid liquid and then we're going to bleed this till we have liquid there all right and then we're going to start charging refrigerant we got let's stop it right here we've got five in it five point six so we got five pounds six ounces in it right now Cut her off. And we're about to start her up. Let's see what it do. Here we go. Well, it started. This gives us a holding charge, but it also gives us a subcooling. It's hard for you guys to see, but right here it says 12. So we're looking for 12 degrees of subcooling. We've been running for a few minutes now. We're not doing too bad. We have four degrees of subcooling. 56 degree suction line and dropping. I like to go by suction line temperature because that kind of gives me an idea of you know how close I am. I don't use it as an end all be all, but 56 degree suction temperature coming back, I know we're getting close. Alright, well, it's really warm in the house right now, but it seems my TXV is wide open. So I'm not going to put any more. Yeah, see, that subcooling's coming up some. It'll come up some and then go back down. I'll watch it for a few minutes. All right, we got everything zip tied, looking nice. We're up to six degrees of subcooling now. I don't think we're going to make 12. I've already got 7 pounds in it. 
I just don't think we're going to make 12 here. It's running pretty decently now. All right, we got just about 10 degrees of subcooling now. Just over seven pounds of refrigerant. Not crazy about that superheat, but you know, it is what it is. So yeah, we might make 12 after letting it run for a while. I think I'm about to button this one up. Forty-four degree air, nice. With a seventy degree return. We'll call it a sixty-four. Sixty-four degree return. So we got a twenty degree split. All right, there she is. Another one done.